again. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Shabbat shalom. All right. Welcome to the Lord class. Before we begin, I just want to give all praise to the Most High, the great I am, Ahaya, Ba'asham Yeshaya, through his son, Yeshaya, the only begotten son, who is the way to the Father. So we, we're going to um, have a quick lesson today due to the fact that, you know, Deacon Awanya Sub is, is getting ready to do a presentation dealing with the Northern Tribe, which is going to be, a, you know, extremely powerful uh, uh, tonight, at, you know, doors open at six. I mean, we got brothers from the north, no, brothers that came from uh, uh, Texas. I, uh, I see Texas. I see uh, I know Chicago, Illinois. I, I see uh, uh, Memphis. So you, you got the Northern Tribe is representing today. So thank the most high for that. Let's give him a hand. <laughs> Waking up. Okay. And uh, we don't, what, what, what we're going to be doing is, you know, uh, we're going to be brainstorming to try to do. A, a, a some form a uh, celebration of our forefathers every so often. So I think the next uh, get together or the next event, the p next PowerPoint that we're going to be doing, we're going to be giving homage to the Maroons, which is uh, the Benjamites, to go into go into the history of showing that there was uh, history connected to Israel with the Jamaicans and in that lineage. There's a lot of powerful information within the Caribbeans that links up the the so-called Jamaicans to the tribe of Benjamin. So we're working on that. Soon, also all the Benjamites stand up. We're gonna need you to to represent that day, okay? okay. All right. I want with some curry chicken. I want some curry goat that day. You know, so we're gonna definitely represent. So we're gonna be working on this in the near future. So what we're gonna be doing is uh, today we're gonna have a quick lesson. It's 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 gonna be part or introduction of a PowerPoint that I'm doing next week in regards to the history of the different doctrines that were um, uh, developed through the process of time and why do most mainstream uh, Christian churches to, to today believe a certain doctrine in regards of, of, of the New Testament. You know, uh, you know uh, the laws are done away with. Now you got to believe it's just faith, believe in Jesus, and you'll be saved. Uh, that, that goes back into the Pauline doctrine or the Pauline Christian doctrine that was develop, developed very early on that basically believe that the Paul was actually the manifestation or the true doctrine um, that 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 would you know Christ was teaching that he was even corrected the he was sent to correct the apostles so so uh, so we're gonna go into that uh, the misunderstanding of that of course uh, and also we're gonna go into the history when did who was responsible for changing the belief that the sons of God mentioned in Genesis was the sons of Seth, the origin of that, uh, who, who, who was the pioneers of that, you know, uh, and for you could, when you're debating someone, you can pull out these names and these, these time period things, and so we got, I want to put it together as a PowerPoint for next week, okay? So with that being said, I'm going to just touch on a little bit on, on the lesson that we touch on Tuesday in regards of Paul's writing, which is the most controversial of all the apostles due to the fact that he's the most misunderstood uh, out of the uh, the scriptures, so we're going to start with Romans chapter two, and then those that were here is, is a recap a lot. So if if you were here and I, I raised, I actually asked you a question, you should know this. So that means you was paying attention. If you don't know, that means you wasn't paying attention. Okay, so let's start at Romans chapter one, verse one. Let's set the stage. This is the letter to the Romans or the Jews that were in Rome. And the, w what is the perception in the world today? That most people think that Paul was writing to the physical Romans, right? The Gentile right. Romans, the tip, you know, typical Romans in, in, in uh, Rome. But he was actually writing to the elite of the Jews, or what you call the, uh, what is that Greek word? The Sanhedrin. He was speaking to the Sanhedrin, who were the elite of the Hebrew community at that time. Some of them were Israelites, and some of them were Edomites, okay? But he was speaking to the elite. So, for, and, and this could be proven right in the scripture. So we're going to set the stage so when you may be having a discussion with someone, and they may have the perception that he was speaking, that you were speaking to, uh, he was speaking to Irish Gentile, he was actually speaking to Israelites, because the evidence is right there in the scripture. So let's set the tone, Romans 1, chapter 1, verse 1, and we're going to just jump, and we're going to go into the meat and potatoes of it. 
So uh, you can read, brother, if you don't mind, deacon, elder. The book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, a servant of Yeshua Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of the Most High, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son Yeshua Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. So that's also gives you the understanding that Christ was a descendant of King David uh, according to the flesh. He was, uh, and, you, and I think Deacon uh, Awanyasap did a lesson that according to the flesh, the word flesh, when you go into the, to the Greek word, means uh, coming through a uh, regular way in the way in regards all human beings come in and through, uh, or to, you know, the word there is dealing with animal lust or, 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 or that, you know, dealing with what was sexual relations, okay? So let's read. Verse 4, and declared to be the son of the most high with power according to the spirit of holiness. So the separation, because even I even, even heard arguments that being separated from even the, the apostles, that he's coming with a different doctrine. I'm separated. But the separation that he was referring to is that he was separated because he came from what? The Essenes, or the Pharisees, excuse me. So he was speaking to the elite of the people that he used to work for, you understand, and be under that uh, tutelage, right? So he was separate, he was talking to them. And it's going to prove that. Let's keep reading. By the resurrection from the dead, verse 5, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name among whom are ye also the call of Yeshua Christ, to all that be in Rome, beloved of the Most High. Beloved of the Most High, showing you that this is talking about actual believers. Beloved of the Most High, the, 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 the Israelites in, in Rome. Read. Called to be saints. Called to be what? Saints. So who are the saints of the Most High? Israel. The Israelite. How do you prove that? What scripture do you go to? In Fifty and five, Psalms fifty and five. So that's the scripture you would go to. Uh, you can write it down if you don't have it. Psalms fifty, verse five, when it states that uh, "Gather my saints unto me, those that I have uh, have have of a covenant mm -hmm. by sacrifice." Okay, those the only people that did that was Israel. So proving that's, that's but it's more. Let's keep reading. To all that be in Rome, beloved of the Most High, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from our power, Ahia. In the Lord, Yeshua Christ. First, I thank my power through Yeshua Christ for you all, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For the Most High is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son. You got to remember, every single sect of Judaism that, were that was established in, during the time of Christ, or that were, you know, existed in the time of Christ, the average person were sincere. It was the leadership that was corrupt, but the Irish Essenes, the Irish Pharisees, the Irish Zelock, the Irish whatever sect they were, they were sincerely believing in, their, in that particular doctrine. So it's not that they were like, ha ha, we know we're wrong, but we're going to teach this. They actually, you know, they used to actually believe that they were uh, sincerely dealing with the truth. Okay, so he was giving them homage to that. Let's, let's read. That without ceasing, I make mention of you always in my prayers, making requests. If by any means now at length I might have a pro prosperous journey by the will of the Most High to come unto you. Okay, keep reading. For I down. long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift. To the end ye may be established. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith both of you and me. Now I will not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I propose to come unto you, but was less hereunto, excuse me, Salakia, but was, was let hereunto, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. Okay, and then, you know, the Gentile is, is, is synonymous with the word people or, or and things of that nature. Okay, so let's jump down. I want to set the stage. So he's, Paul is speaking to the elite, and he's going to prove that in the actual scriptures. So when you, when you keep reading, he is trying to, he's going back into the writings of, or, or, or the, the beginning of man. Let's start at verse 17 real quick. 
Let's start verse 16 and 17. The book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of the Most High unto salvation to everyone that believeth. So this is the first time he starts talking Christ. So he, he's acknowledged them that they get, you know, they're brothers. My, my, I, always have, I always have my prayers towards you and, and thinking of you, but now he's about to teach Christ. Read. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. Also to the Greek, read. For therein is the righteousness of the Most High revealed from faith to faith. Okay. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Come on. For the wrath of the Most High is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Okay, now he, he's going back into showing how unrighteous is humanity, correct? So let's start at verse 24. And we are familiar with these scriptures. Mm -hmm. He's setting the stage to, to, to convey that the Holy Scripture tells you that all humanity is wicked. And there's a reason why he's studying with these scriptures. There's a reason why, because remember, these people were what? The elite judges of Israel. So he is setting the stage to say, listen, we cannot be high-minded because our holy scripture tells us that all men are wicked. So that's the reason why he's setting the stage. Let's keep reading. Verse 24. Wherefore the Most High also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who, cha who changed the truth of the Most High into a lie, and worship and serve the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever, Amen. Amen. For this cause the Most High gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use unto, unto that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burn in their lust one toward another. Men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. So Paul is bringing out all the wickedness of humanity, how wicked humanity is, homosexuality, lesbianism. He's uh, 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 going to go into that. Let's read. Verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain the Most High in their knowledge, the Most High gave them over to a reprobate mind. Come on. To do those things which are not convenient. Come on. Being filled with all unrighteousness. Come on. Fornication. Uh huh. Wickedness. Uh huh. Covetousness. Come on. Maliciousness. Uh huh. Full of envy. Come on. Murder. Debate. Deceit. Malignity. Whisperers. Backbiters. Haters of the Most High. Despiteful. Proud. Boasters. Inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection. And the reason why Paul was coming hard on sinners, because he was trying to prove them a point. It's going gonna, it's gonna to show you something. He's trying to, he's, he's, so he's coming on all the wicked sins, right? And he, keep reading. Implacable, uh -huh. unmerciful. Come on. Who knowing the judgment of the Most High. Who knowing what? The judgment of the Most High. Who knows, who's knowing the judgment of the Most High still do these things. Keep reading. That they which commit such things are worthy of death. Of what? Of death. It's the reason why he came on hard to, the, to, the, to, to these uh, 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 elite. You know this, right? Because he was pricking them in their heart. He's going to show you that. Let's read. Not only do the same but have pleasure in them that do them. Not only do the same, but enjoy other people that do them. Read. Now, yeah. now, verse, remember, these chapters were divided to, to kind of, uh, for our, uh, you know, uh, convenience to, to search the scriptures. But the epistle of the Romans was one epistle. So let's continue reading. Let's read 32, and let's, which is the last chapter of verse uh, 1, chapter 1. And let's jump down to chapter 2. Would I even skip in a beat? To show you, it, what, what, if you see, you pick, if you pick it up. So let's read 32 and jump down to chapter 2, verse 1. Verse 32. Who knowing the judgment of the Most High, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man. Now he's turning on them. Now you are un un unexcusable, O man, that do what? Whosoever thou art that ju that judges. Is the what? Thou art that judges. So you see, you see what I'm saying? Now he's turning on them. 
Now you on an excuses rule that, that does what? Judges. Showing you he was not talking to regular Romans. He was talking to people that have authority within their community. You see that? So it's showing you that he, he set the stage. All the wickedness and all this thing that he was talking about, they were probably doing it. Yeah, check. We do that. Yeah, we do that too. <laughs> so now he said, you are unexcusable, old man, that judges. That's why Christ says, judge not. Meaning you're not supposed to execute the punishment that was mentioned in the Torah. Because if you do that, then we should all be like, listen, after you kill me, uh, you got to kill, she'll kill you. And uh, uh, <laughs> it'll be the last man standing <laughs> who's, who's going to kill me. I can't kill myself because it's a sin, so I'm stuck. <laughs> you know, we, we, all, we should all be like, you know, <laughs> okay, do like a mask of a standout. You shoot me the same time I shoot you because uh, that's the only way we could, you know. <laughs> Don't, no miss. Then I'm <laughs> right? So let's keep reading. So he's setting the stage here. Read. For wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. You see that? So now he's speaking to, the, to, to the, the teachers. Let's keep reading. For thou that judgest doest the same things. You see that? If you, you're judging. You're, 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 you're talking about. A situation like, listen, brother, yeah, you can't divorce your wife, but this, <laughs> you're a judge. This is your third wife. <laughs> you know, you 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 know, you sentenced somebody to death because he killed his brother. But you you know, last week you know you had a situation. You understand? So so it, it, read that again. For verse uh, chapter two, verse one. Therefore, thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judges. For wherein thou judgest another. Thou condemnest thyself. Come on. For thou that judges doest the same things. So you got to remember, the Sanhedrin were not just simply, you know, rabbinical leaders and that you go to. These were the court system, our, our community. So we have, you know, because what, what, the, what the Romans did, they or the Greek culture was basically like this, is that if you are Hebrew and you are Kemet and you a, a Babylonian, you will still keep your traditions and the elders of your community can still be in their position. All they have to do is have their soldiers be part of the Roman soldiers. And basically Rome, the best way to describe Rome was the muscle to protect your culture. So you see the brilliancy of that. So a lot of people view Rome and the Hellenistic culture as being great. They view them as um, liberators because when you go into, and they really got that, to be honest with you, from the Persians because the Persian was the first one that got that idea. That's why um, King Darius uh, decreed for Israel to rebuild the temple. He did not only decree for Israel, he decreed for all people to go rebuild the temple. They're like, you know, just, just, just rebuild your, your, your situation. But the legend is, is that he converted to our God. You know, he, he stepped because he began to examine all the gods and he realized that the God of Israel is the true God. So, but, you know, but then after that, uh, they began to fall off and things of that nature. Okay. So with that being said, that concept of the Hellenistic culture was very attractive to many people because they say, okay, we could keep our gods. We could keep our culture. The only thing that the Greek wanted is to translate all your writings into the Greek language and put it in the library of Alexandria. Okay, Ptolemy started that. So, for, so the Greek could study everybody's culture. So that's what they wanted. Trans, transform everything to the Greek, and then you could follow everything within, within the Greek language. So we could, we could follow you, and we know what you're doing within your writings. So that was the whole thing, okay? That's why what the Septuagint came about, all right? Uh, okay, so so I, I don't want to go to a, a history uh, a lesson, but let's continue reading. So, but these so these people were actually the court system of Israel. These were not just synagogue that you go there every weekend and learn a good sermon. No, these were actually those people, but also the people that you would go to to deal with theft, murder, you know, adultery. These are the people that judge and could and could sentence you to death. Okay, they have that authority. So let's keep reading. Verse 2, Romans chapter 2, verse 2. So when people read this, they think he's talking about judge, like don't criticize people. No, this is talking about 
don't, you know, you're not supposed to be doing what you're doing. So imagine if us writing a letter to the district court of the Bronx. Like, you know, I don't think you guys should uh, be there anymore and be having court every, you know, you're not supposed to. So they're going to look at you like, how can we run the a society then? Because Paul was bringing, or the apostles were bringing, really Christ, a radical new way. Every man judge himself. No cops, no court system. You judge yourself. And when Christ returns, he's going to judge you. It was a radical different way from the time of, of you know, the way we, was, we were doing it. You know, because then those that were stuck with laws, Mo, the, law, the law of Moses, but Moses told us to put judges in each city, you know, to control the people. That's not necessary anymore. No more judges. What's the word judge? Do not judge. Judges. Don't do that no more. That everybody does, you know, do, do, the, do, uh, uh, do the right thing. So let's keep reading. Romans chapter 2, verse 2. But we are sure that the judgment of the Most High is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judges them which do such things, and, do, and does it the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of the Most High. She is showing you that he was speaking to the elite of, the, of his people. Read. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering? Not knowing that the goodness of the Most High leadeth thee to repentance, but after thy hardness and intemperate heart treasureth up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of the Most High, who will render to every man according to his deeds. Read that again. Who will render unto every man according to his deeds. So your position, and that's what people don't understand, is, is that Christ came to take away the, Levit the Levitical order. He came to take away that their position, and they did not want to let it go. You say, I'm here. I I'm the prophet that Moses was talking about. I need that position. And they didn't want to let it go. So let's jump down to verse 17. They want to set the stage to show you that he was speaking to the elite. The book of Romans, chapter 2, verse 17. Behold, Thou art called a Jew, and resteth in the law. Resteth in the law. And makest thou boast of the Most High. Come on. And knowest his will, and approvest the things that are more excellent. Come on. Being instructed out of the law. See, so this is talking about the elite. So you suppose, you know, you call yourself the elite of the elite, you know, a leading of the blind, right? Let's read. And are confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind. So these are teachers. These is the Sanhedrin, right? The top rabbis of our community. Read. A light of them which are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes. Come on. Which has the form of knowledge and of the truth in the law. Thou therefore which teaches another, teachest that thou not thyself, that thou preachest a man should not steal, does thou steal? Thou that saith a man should not commit adultery, does thou commit adultery? Thou that up, abhorrest idols, does thou commit sacrilege? That thou makest thy boast of the law, thou breaking the law, dishonor thou power. For the name of the Most High is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you. And they were doing these things by through how? Through the Talmud. Okay. Using justification because the Talmud, that's why Christ says you violate the laws of God through your traditions. Because they were creating certain loopholes and philosophizing. And another thing you have to remember, the Sahedrin were Hellenized. What is the concept when you look at, when you start reading the, the Talmud? It's a lot of philosophy. What was the Greek known for? Philosophy. So when the number one reason why Paul is misunderstood in many ways, because Paul understood their language and understood how they, th how they think, so he had to philosophize a lot of things to get into them. That's why he said to a Jew, I became a Jew, to a Greek, I became a Greek, to game a fool. So sometimes in his writing, is like, I got to speak their language for they can understand. So we, we're going to show you that. So uh, keep reading. Verse 24, for the name of the Most High is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, as it is written, for circumcision verily profiteth, if thou keep the law. 
Okay, so it wasn't that he was against the circumcision, but he said you, your circumcision profits you if you keep the law. If you don't keep the law, what happens? Nice. You, you are a violator of that covenant. You get the curses. Let's keep reading. But if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Come on. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? So see, he was dealing with philosophy because he was dealing with Hellenistic Jews. He was dealing with the Jews that were in Rome. Philosophy was, was always, you know, they used to have banquets and halls of people just coming up and philosophizing and debating back and forth. The whole concept of debate started in Greek, in Rome. You know, philosophy and different theories and things that, and different arguments. And, and even you got in college today, you got debate teams and all that. All that comes from Rome. And, and you even have debate teams that would, would tell you, I want you to debate against your own belief or debate against something that you know is wrong and, 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 and to train you how to became a, become a good debater. So you have to go and start looking for something that to disprove something that is true. That's what they do in college. Anybody that's been in college and, and, and deals with these, you know, academia, that, you know, dealing with debate or, or, or human resource, I mean, uh, human development or, or communication major and things of that nature, you have to take these courses. And they train you how to become uh, debaters of foolishness. So if you are a good debater and you win the debate and you mm -hmm. was in, in, in road of debating something that was wrong, was it true that you you know you won because it is it what you prove it what you you won because it was true or you won because you a deceitful <laughs> mind <laughs> word manipulator that know how to manipulate like Satan. So all that philosophy concept is dealing with Satan. Because Satan is the first one. No, you're not gonna die, Eve. Let me holler at you. Come on, let me, let me, nah, he doesn't want you to be like him. Shh. I'm looking out for you. Right? So, so, so all that, so he was dealing with their mindset. It's going gonna, it's gonna to prove that. Let's keep reading. Romans chapter 2, verse 27. And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee, who by the letter and circumcision doeth transgress the law. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Now, this is one of the number one thing that Christians say. See, it's, it's about spiritual Jew. But you need to understand, Paul was speaking to Jews. They had the philosophy that if you be circumcised and you keep Torah, you become a Jew. Okay? So the concept of if you convert to Judaism, you become a citizen of Judea, regardless of your ancestry. Now, did that came from the most high or that came from the tradition of man? The tradition of man. So the Sanhedrin, which a lot of them were Romans, because even, I don't know if you guys seen the confession with the Jewish guy talking about, uh, you know, uh, we have to start looking at Africa and, and there's many people claiming to be Jews and all that. And within that, he said, you know, there's, there's even a belief that they said that they're the real Judeans and we came... We are later converts, and we have to consider that because many of our sages are actually were Roman converts. Remember when he said that? Mm -hmm. So that concept started with us. So we allowed people to philosophize, and I could imagine it probably was an Edomite. You know, uh, excuse me, uh, Rabbi, hear what you want. I was just looking at the scripture. So technically, right, if I'm a Jew or I converted to Judaism, could I be call myself a, a spiritual Jew or, you know what I mean? And it became a thing. So by the time when Paul was dealing with these guys, he, was, he, he had to deal with their philosophy. So it wasn't Christ or the Most High that ordained that thought process. It was man that began that thought process. So he was throwing it back in their faces. You understand? Because he was saying, you hypocrites, you're not keeping the Torah. But these other people... 
and, and he referred to the Gentiles or the non-circumcised, the people that were not circumcised, Israelite, they were scattered, they were keeping the spirit of the law. Isn't that is counted as circumcision? So he was philosophizing with them to try to win an argument. Okay, so let's keep reading. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision, which is our in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. And, and I will probably say this was probably a question. He was probably, you, you know, matter of fact, read it as a question. But is he a Jew, which is one inwardly? And circ circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter? Whose praise is not of men, but of the most high? No, uh, read the part that says, uh, Verse uh, 28. Right. It said uh, a Jew inwardly or in a Jew. Uh, verse 29. I'll read that again. But is he a Jew, which is one inwardly? And circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter? Whose praise is not of men, but of the most high? That's right. Sometimes certain conversation, when you change the, 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 the angle, it gives brother light to it. You understand what I'm saying? So, so sometimes, you know, I'm pretty sure if we could take a time machine and see when Paul was writing this, he was probably uh, changing his tempo in, in, in this direction to get a better understanding. So sometimes when you ask certain things, and because he was arguing a point, he was trying to argue a point. So sometimes when you are arguing a point, you're throwing things to their faces and you place it as a, as a, as a question. Isn't this means that? You see what I'm saying? So that so so when you read that sometimes do that and it gives better light to the scriptures because this is a, a debate he's he's debating with a sanhedrin, right? Let's read. Verse uh, Romans chapter three verse one. What advantage then have the Jew? Okay, so now he's bringing it back to, uh, the 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 actual Israelites, right? Let's read. What advantage then have the Jew? What advantage then has the Jew? Read. Or what profit is there of circumcision? What profit? Um, then on circumcision. So he was saying that if you, he was giving their philosophy back to them. So he was saying, if you, isn't they that are of the non-circumcision, if they keep the, the, the aura of the law, they themselves, wouldn't they consider themselves a Jew? So if anybody could call themselves a Jew, if they convert, remember he was dealing with their philosophy now. Then he brought it back, is there an advantage of being an Israelite? You get what I'm saying? Paul is like, he's all over, he's, he's a very abstract type of writer. That's why it's very hard to understand. So now he was actually speaking to the tribe of Judah. Is the advantage of being a Jew? Or the, the because at that time that Ju Judean was a universal term for all Israelites, if you can understand. Uh, so read that again. What advantage then have the Jew? Come on. Or what profit is there of circumcision? Come on. Much every way. Much every way, read. Chiefly. Chiefly. Because that unto them were committed the oracles of the Most High. Unto them. So to prove that the them is talking about the Israelite, let's go to Acts 17. Acts 7.38. Matter of fact, we could start at 37. Okay. And this proves two things, that it was Christ that gave us the law. I know there's people coming in. Just be mindful, folks. If you have bags, put them under your seat because uh, more people are coming in. Uh, do we have more, any more chairs in the back? Brother Sean, if you could check by the, the court check, there may be more uh, seats back there in the corner. You could bring them up as well, the water. And this, is, this seat's here. Okay. We, we, we're, we have a bigger church. We, we're going to... Uh, I'm just waiting to see two more of the church before I make my decision. But we already got it. The guy already, you know, uh, it's like up the two blocks down that way. So, um, they could sit like 300 people. So we just got to, I'm just waiting just to get another. 
more opportunities to see if, uh, before I make a decision. Okay, so let's keep reading. The book of Acts, chapter 7, verse 37. This is that Moses, which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Most High your power raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me, him shall you hear. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai. This is he, talking about Christ, that spoke with the church, meaning the word that church means uh, assembly or, con uh, you know, uh, gathering. Okay. Read. In the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai. Come on. And with our fathers Come who on. received the lively oracles to they, give unto us. They gave what? Lively oracles the, to give unto us. The lively oracles to give unto us. So this, so when it says what advantage it has a Jew is referring to the actually descendants of Israel in this concept. He was philosophizing with about dealing with their culture that you could be called Judean spiritually because that started with, with the so-called Jews. If you speak to a so-called Jew, and, and, and you start going into the the uh, the uh, ancestors. Can you prove that they're Israelites? Well, in the Jewish religion, that's not really important. As long as you keep Torah, that makes you a Jew. Only a Gentile would come up with that doctrine. <laughs> right? <laughs> to, to, yeah. Speaking like a Jew Gentile, right? Is this again? Yeah, replacement theology. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You know, bloodline. That's not. You can't prove that anymore. As long as you keep Torah. Yeah. Okay. All right, so, so let's go back to Romans. Uh, chapter 3. That's right, it's very important to learn the people that he was arguing with. You know, their thought process. But you can understand because he was speaking their language. You know, that's why I... I I would love to, and I said this before, I would love to read the letters that Paul was responding to because it gives you, it would give you a better understanding, you know, now the things concerning you unto me, it is good for a man to, you know, I would wonder what was the questions that were asking him, okay? All right, so that's, um, and they do exist out there. We're just doing some research. They, we have so far the people that were speaking against Paul and why, and so we got those P, those characters that live contemporarily with Paul, and they were they were debating with him and doing the time right, and Peter and other and other that were you know not Peter that, that Peter was debating with Paul, but other people that were debating with, with Peter and, and, and James. They, we got those people, and we you were trying to get their, their 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 writings and things of that nature. Okay, so let's continue reading. The Book of Romans, chapter three, verse three. For what if some did not believe? What if some did not believe? Read. Shall their unbelief make the faith of the Most High without effect? Come on. The Most High forbid. Come on. Yet, yeah. let the Most High be true, but every man a liar. Let every, now remember this very point, because this is a question that was asked last week. So, so who was here last, on Tuesday? One, two, okay. So you got, I'm going to actually grant you guys this question. Okay. Well, well, not you guys. See, somebody else will pick it up. <laughs> okay, right, right. That would be too easy. All right. Uh, let's read. Let's read that again. The Most High forbid, yea, let the Most High be true, but the every most, man... I'm sorry, so I can read? But every man a liar. Every man a liar. So every man, that means every man, right? Okay, let's read. As it is written, uh -huh. that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, Come on. and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Come on. But if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of the Most High... The word command there was um, demonstrate. Demonstrate. When you go to the, it means demonstrate, right? So it says, for if our unrighteousness command or demonstrate the righteousness of the Most High, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous who takes vengeance? Remember, Paul was dealing with philosophy now because he was dealing with Hellenistic Jews. So what he was saying that the scripture, remember, he started off to, uh, with a rant of how wicked humanity is, who changed the true image of God, you know, reprobate minds, who deserve death, right? And then he's, church, he's switching on them and said, you are excusable but all men that judge another man, right? And he's going, back, he's going back to the same point that even the Holy Scripture says 
They're all managed vanity. Matter of fact, that scripture that he's quoting is, what is it here? I believe it's Psalms. I can't see right. Psalm 62. That's it. Psalm 62 and 9. Let's go there. Psalm 62 and 9. So it's always very important when you Paul is quoting an Old Testament or even Christ or any disciple is quoting an Old Testament. Read the whole thing because he's not necessarily just quoting that verse necessarily. He's quoting the he he's referring to the whole chapter. You understand what I'm saying? So sometimes it's good to read the whole chapter for you to understand the essence of what he was talking about. Because he may be just quoting the highlights of the chapter, but he's quoting the whole chapter. Okay? Any more chairs, brother? Not back there? Okay. All right. You could also, there's that chair there and that chair here, brother, if you need it. Okay? All right, the water. Okay. Okay. All right. And then we got one, two. And we got another one over here. All right. Okay. Let's keep reading. Uh, so we got it? Psalm 62 and 9. Yes. Huh? The book of Psalms, chapter 62, verse 9. Come on. Surely men of low degree are vanity. Surely men of low degree are vanity. And men of high degree and, are a lie. And men of what? Of high degree are a lie. So remember it says, let every man be a liar, as the scripture says. So he was speaking to men of what? High degree. So he was conveying to them that your, the scriptures that you so call supposed to hold dear is calling you a liar. It's calling you, uh, I'll read that again. Surely men of low degree are vanity. Of vanity, read. And men of high degree are a lie. Are a lie, read. To be laid in the balance. They are altogether lighter than vanity. Come on. Trust not in oppression. Come on. And become not vain in robbery. Come on. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. So all the, the whole scripture, when you, when you read in the book of Psalms, what, uh, 68? 62. 62. This whole scripture is dealing with uh, this subject matter that Paul is, 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 is addressing. So, so let's go back to Romans. The book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 6. Start at verse 5 again. But if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of the Most High... What shall we say? Read. Is the most high unrighteous who take a vengeance? I speak as a man. So what Paul is, is saying to a people is that if he is saying all men are unrighteous, and why is he then taking vengeance? Now remember, he is dealing with Greek philosophers. They're Jews, but they're still approaching the scriptures from a Greek philosophy point of view. So he has to speak their language. Right? Let's read. Verse 6. The most high forbid. The most high forbid. So that's not what Paul is saying. So he's bringing a, 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 a he's saying a statement or asking, uh, answering a question and then he's saying no, that's not what I'm saying. So the most high is not unrighteous for bringing forth judgment. Okay? To a wicked world. Right? Let's read. For then, how shall the Most High judge the world? How can he, the Most High judge the world if it wasn't for what? Uh, the law, the righteousness of the law, or his will. Read. For if the truth of the Most High have more ab abound through my lie unto his glory, yet... Read, read that again. For if the truth of the Most High have more abounded through, through my, my lie unto his glory. Through my lie. Get, it, it, see, with, with, uh, Kazak went. He went, okay. Um... The word my lie, a lot of people say, you see, Paul admitted he's a liar. You can't trust his writings. He's a liar. Outside the people that we are on Tuesday, what is, this, what is he referring to? Raise your hand. Who knows this? I think I addressed this maybe this like a year and a half ago. <laughs> he was here in that class. When, read the scripture. Verse 7. 
For if the truth of the Most High have more abounded through my lie unto his glory. Read four again. That's the clue. It's right there. God forbid. Yea, let the Most High be true, but every man a liar. So go down to seven. For if the truth of the Most High have more abounded through my lie unto his glory. Why yet am I also judged as a sinner? So he's reiterating verse 4. But now he is personalizing it. Because he said every man is a liar. So now he is asking the question, if it's someone who agrees that the scripture says let every man be a liar, now he's putting himself as he himself is asking the question. See, his, the way he talks, is, it's, it's, you got to, you know, it's, take your time away because you can confuse him. So it was not to say he's a liar. He was hypothetically speaking and saying, okay, Father, if you're calling me a liar and unrighteousness, why are you judging me? So that's, that's what he's, so he's bringing himself into this. He's, he's reverbalizing the same thing, but from a personal perspective, right? Why yet am I also judged as a sinner? As a sinner, read. And not rather as we be slanderous, slanderously. Now it says, and not as rather as we be slanderous reported, right? So it is, it was a rumor or people were slandering, reporting about Paul, that Paul, Paul's doctrine was saying this, what he was about to say. Let's read. Let us do, Slakia, and as some affirm that we say, let us do evil that good may come, whose damnation is just. Now, the reason why he said this is because he was referring to, or they were confusing Paul with the, what's that group in Revelations, Nick, uh, Nick. Nicolaitans, because the Nicolaitans had a doctrine that if you have a, a um, you have a a, a, um, a issue with a um, yeah we, we could put you got a, we got an extra street if you need it brother you got it okay the water okay so what at that time the Nicolaitans was teaching is that if you have a sin if you have a problem with a sin whether it be drugs smoking fornication. Their doctrine was engage in that sin. Do it a lot. For then it could uh you could you could win it out of your system. That was the doctrine of the Nicodation at that time. So we got the history. Next week I'm gonna bring that in. So there was a doctrine going on. It's like, yeah, sin, knock yourself out. <laughs> they, then at the end, you're gonna be like, I don't, you know, you're gonna you're gonna bring it out because they, they were dealing with a lot of philosophy and things of that nature. That goes to show you when you let philosophy in, you could end up, you know, uh, you know, and, and I could imagine how they probably used that doctrine for, as an example that there was somebody that probably was engaging in a particular sin, like, you know, drugs or whatever, and he did it, got an overdose, and then didn't want to do it anymore because he outgrew it, and then they probably brought down philosophy, you see? So this is how you heal yourself. I mean, if you look at, if you, if you read a lot of the, the philosophy of the Greeks and how they view the world, it, it, it's really, it was like uh, out there in things of that nature. So he was saying that they were slashly reporting that let us do evil that good may, uh, be, uh, read, read again, may come. Chapter 8. And not rather, as we be slanderously reported, and as some affirm that we say, let us do evil that good may come, whose damnation is just. Okay, whose damnation is just. So that he said, that's not what I'm saying. Read number nine. What then? Are we better than they? Come on. No, in no wise. For we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. So remember he was going back into verse chapter 1 and, and, and going into we all wicked, humanity is sin, and we all liars, we all filthy. So he said, I have proven through scriptures, okay, because what the epistle, the way it, it, it is, is like you read a commentary and you back it up with a scripture. You read a commentary and you back it up with the scriptures. So then when they're reading the, the, the letter, they could confirm, okay, what this guy is saying is correct because... It's been proven. So, and because 
the Torah, the Tanakh were not accessible to everybody, the rabbis would have to look at it and say, oh, okay, he's right on there, he's wrong. You, you understand? So that's why it, it, when, you, when, you, when we wrote, it wasn't just letters. It had to be backed up, especially if it is an argument or, or, or a plea for something. We always have to put in the scriptures as a, as a backup to say to prove our point. Okay? So let's keep reading. Verse 10. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after the Most High. And he's quoting another scripture. Okay, that's in the, also in the book of uh, Sons. I have looked down upon the earth and the sons of man, and I've seen none of them that have been done righteous. This is the Most High ranting about humanity. So he's showing you that the Most High, the, his thought is validated by the scriptures. Read. Verse 12. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. Now remember, most Christians will use these scriptures to say, see, we don't have to keep the commandment because even God told us oh, 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 we are wicked. But what was the argument that Paul was talking about? What was the first, what was the, the thing he's trying to tell these leaders, these judges, to stop doing? Stop judging people. So it wasn't he was against the law and we don't have to longer do it. He was saying, listen, you are not worthy to be a judge. No one is. And he was pleading his case. Okay? So it's like I said this before. Going into the, uh, 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 Paul's writing and going midway, it's like walking into a movie halfway. Who's that guy chasing the other guy? What happened? You don't know. You got to okay. see from the beginning. So you, it's Paul writing is very eccentric, right? So let's read. Verse 13. Their throat is an, is an open sepulcher. With their tongue, they have used deceit. The poison of apps and under the lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. And there's two things that he was also combating within the Sanhedrin community. The rabbinical tradition is that you're not allowed to, con to uh, vandalize people, meaning go out there and try to convert people to uh, the Most High, the Torah, right? So that was a a problem. It was like a Mexican stand-down. The Sanhedrin, now we're the righteous. They're the wicked. We can't go to them. They have to come to us and then we'll teach them how to be righteous. So Paul was trying to convince the Sanhedrin, you're not that righteous because their own scripture is telling you all men is, 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 is wicked. You understand? So he was trying to confirm that you're not better than them. That's why it, 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 if you're going to go from the perspective that you're not going to them because they're dirty or they're wicked or they're filthy, you're just as filthy as them. So you could go to them. <laughs> you're not breaking that law if you're going to go from that, you know, that tradition. Uh, so let's keep reading. Verse 16. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of the Most High before their eyes. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the, the law. Come on. That every mouth may be stopped. Come on. And all the world may be, be, become guilty before the Most High. Come on. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. Now, what is this Paul saying? Because this sounds like very... Uh, uh, um, uh, contradictory because there's a verse in chapter 2 that says uh, not the hearers of the law but the doers uh, verse 13 2 13 that's it okay. yeah, that's it It's two and um, I'll start at verse 11, actually. Okay. For there is no respect of persons with the Most High. Uh -huh. For as many as have sinned without the law shall perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just before the Most High, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Okay, so now, what I mean, chapter 2 is saying the, the, the doers of the law shall be justified. But then in chapter 3, what he says? Chapter 3, verse 20. 
Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Okay, so what is he saying here? Because he, you know, Paul, that's one of the reason why many people say, you see, you can't trust the Bible, can't trust Paul, because he's contradicting himself. But what is he really saying here? What he's saying is, is that he was trying to convey the reality of the day. In other words, not those that are in front of the Most High and going to be in front of the Most High in Christ, they must be justified by the law. But right now, none of what you guys are. That's what he was trying to say. You, if you're gonna, you see, if you're gonna go by the deed of the law, you're gonna fall short glory of the of the Most High. So, so it, it's that's what he was trying to convey. He was not talking about a future scenario. He was talking about a contemporary present scenario. You get what I'm saying? So when he says that not the hearers of the law will be justified, that's a future tense. Over here is present tense. You get what I'm saying? Okay, all right. So let's keep reading. The book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 21. But now the righteousness of the Most High without the law is manifested, being witnessed by, by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of the Most High, which is by faith of Yeshua Christ, unto all and upon all that them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of the Most High. So what... Paul was also teaching us something almost radical, that the first principal thing that you must learn, that Christ forgives you for all your sins. That's the first thing. And then once you do that, you're justified. But after you, you, you have the faith that he forgives you of the sins, should we make void the law? God forbid. So you see, he was bringing a point with a people that were saying, we can't go to these people because they are not justified. They're not cleansed. Because when you go to the word justified, it means cleansed, holy. You know, but she, he was using their language for they could understand and things of that nature. So you are holy if you believe in Christ without fully understanding the, two, the Torah because that's a process. You understand? Remember, back then it took five years for you to convert, even to this day. So it, it's, 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 you have to understand first the understanding. That's why the first thing that we... We, when, when, when the baptism, we don't go into the whole understanding of th the 313 laws of Moses. That's going to take time. The first thing we, 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 we focus on is, is that understanding what you're doing. You must be born again. Now you must start your life again. So now going forward, whatever you do, even though if you don't know what is the right answer, the, your job is to seek what is the right answer. Now you're living for him. So what the understanding is, is that you have to be, you have to ask forgiveness for all the sins that you've done in your past life. Even if you do not know if some, what was sin and what was not sin. Because some brothers come in and sisters may not know the entire law. Oh, I didn't know that was a law. Right? That takes time. But the foundation is Christ. Then after that, you could be taught. You know, and things of that nature. Uh, let's keep reading. Romans chapter 3, verse 24. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Yeshua Christ, whom the Most High have set forth to be a appropriation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past. Come on. Through the forbearance of the Most High. Come on. To declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Yeshua. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? of works, nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. The man is justified. We conclude, and this is one of the number one scripture that, that Christians use to say we don't have to keep the law. Right? Read that again. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Okay, give me the word justified there first. I got here declare righteous apart from what, what do you got I have uh, G1344 and it's die Kyle 
It says to render, that is, that is show or regard as, just or innocent, free, justify, justifier, be righteous. Okay, be righteous. So they were dealing, he was dealing with the philosophy of the Sanhedrin that the only way they could be righteous, they have to first convert and then we could deal with them. He was saying you have to believe in Christ, that he's the Messiah that will forgive you all sins, and that is what makes you righteous without knowing the deeds of the law, outside of the law. That's the first principle. He's going to keep reading. Read. Verse, I'll read verse 27 again. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Come on. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without is, the he deeds. He is cleansed, all right, cleansed, because remember, the, the Jews were dealing with the philosophy that you are not allowed to, um, and matter of fact, let, let me read this real quick. Uh, I, I have used this before to kind of get an understanding. Let me get it real quick. A different sect of Judaism, real quick, for you to get a kind of sense of what Paul was saying. Uh, from the surrender, uh, friends, how is it? The Pharisees, Pharisees, and the Essenes, the term Essenes, okay, blah, blah, blah. Okay, uh, Deacon, if you don't mind, because my, uh, you can read this over here real quick. Just come, just come on back, I'll guide you because my, this is lost. Uh, Just read this real quick, because this is real small. I think it says, uh, a party bearing the name of Pharisees. Okay, just read it real quick. A party bearing the name of Pharisees, a Pharisee, is first mentioned during the reign of John Harkranus. That's from 134 to 104 B.C. And it is evident that even then there was an antagonism between the Orthodox Pharisee and the more open-minded Sadducee. The word Pharisee means separated one, and the name probably meant, in the first instance, one who has separated himself from the, corrupt, from the corrupting influence of Hellenism and the zeal for the biblical law. Josephus says that the Pharisees appear more religious than others and seem to interpret the laws more accurately. Pharisees were pan titulous in observing the laws regarding ceremony purity. For this reason, they could not purchase items of food or drink from a sinner for fear of ceremonial defilement. Right. Nor could a Pharisee eat in the house of a sinner. Okay. Keep, 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 keep. Although he might entertain the sinner in his own home, under su such circumstances, the Pharisee would pro provide the sinner with clothes to wear, for the sinner's clothes might be ceremonially, ceremonially impure. With a sincere desire to make the law workable with the changing culture of the uh, Greco-Roman world, the Pharisees developed systems of tradition which sought to apply the law to a variety of circumstances. During the first century before Christ, two inf influential pharisaical teachers gave their names to two schools of legal thought. Helio was the more moderate of the two, ever, ever considerate of the poor and willing to accept Roman rule as compatible with Jew, Jewish orthodoxy. Shemaiah, on the other hand, was more strict in his interpretation and bitterly opposed to Rome. His viewpoint ultimately found expression in the set of Zelox. So, so, okay, the water. 
Oh yeah, you can go right here. This is this one. All right, to kind of get a sense what what was going on in regards how the the Pharisees mean what separate, separate, separate. You can't don't don't touch that. You can't touch me. I can't eat that. I can't you know buy this. So remember when they were criticizing the, the, the Christians or the Jews, I mean, they the believe in Christ. What are your apostles eat without their hands being washed? You violate the tradition of the elders. So when Paul was saying that a man is justified, he was not talking about in this context salvation, but justify or cleanse from their perspective because they separate themselves because the world is dirty. So they have to create additional other laws to protect the. Remember when um, I was saying that you in Moses, you have the, the royal law and then Moses added additional law to protect the people from not breaking the royal law. So if you commit adultery, the law on that or the judgment is kill, kill that person. But that law is not royal, royal. That law is righteous, but it was a judgment. It's not a law to protect you from, for you to keep this law. Okay. Uh, so we went on to the whole situation with the five cities. Remember somebody killed somebody, the manslayer and all that. These things were uh, ordained for the most side to make sure that people stay intact for not breaking the, the, the royal law. Okay. So these things, the Pharisees did it sincerely. It wasn't that we bad people. They were just being misled. misled. They didn't understand the true path of righteousness. Christ gave that, that path, and they didn't want to let it go. Okay, so let's go back to, and we'll, we'll be almost done. So let's go back to Romans. So when Paul said a man is justified, when you, it was talking about that you are, a man is justified because what, and from the Pharisaic perspective, what makes a person cleanse? Or justify. You have to keep Torah. You understand? So, uh, so he, so Paul was trying to argue, guys, you're not keeping Torah properly. So you're not cleansed. You separating yourself, but you're just as wicked as those people that you're claiming you're more righteous than. So that's what he was trying to say that that if you believe in Christ, you're justified. Okay. Now it's it's, it's, it's going to keep reading. He's going to bring it back around. And also, uh, Elder, on that, yeah. also, because if you don't, like, say, for instance, back then, if you didn't believe, you would still be sacrificing animals, right. you know, and those are works of the law. Those are exactly. still, you know, going up because if you believe in Christ, the sacrifice is done with. Exactly. So they would still, if they didn't believe in them, they would still take turtle doves, exactly. lamb, up to the, and those are works. Exactly, and that's why... When remember there was a rumor with Paul in Acts 20, and they were saying, "Listen, there is a report. Let's go there real quick. Acts 20. That tra those traditions were still being held. Acts 20 verse 22, uh, 21. Yeah. This is when Paul went back to Jerusalem. He was in Jerusalem. He was reporting to James and Peter, the apostles. He, he was reporting to them. And this is what, when they came back, this is the, the rumor that was around against Paul. So this is what the, the, the elders of the church told Paul to do. Let, let's read. The book of Acts, chapter 21 you said verse uh, 21, 21. 21, 21. And they are informed of thee that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying that they are, ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the customs. What is it therefore? The multitude must needs come together, for they will hear that thou art come. Do therefore this that we say to thee, we have four men which have a vow on them. So listen, people are going to know you're coming back. They're going to, words are going to get around, Peter, Paul, that you're back and they're going to start questioning you whether you are actually 
keeping the law of Moses. This is the leaders of the church talking to Paul when he came back because Paul used to come, leave, do his travels, pick up many of the tithes and offerings from, from the Gentiles, and then come back and report to the apostles and things of that nature. So that's what he used to do. You know, set up different churches, report, and come back and pick up, you know, a, a, a pick up tithes and offerings to give to the, the church, right, uh, in, in Jerusalem. Let's read. Verse 24. Take them, take, and purify thyself with them. And be at charges with them. So he said, take these men. Uh, read, read 23 again. Verse 23. Do therefore this that we say to thee. So do, do this, Paul. What, what we're telling you. This is what I want you to do. Read. We have four men which have a vow on them. Now the vow usually is dealing with the vow of the Nazarite. Nazarite vow. Okay. Read. Take them take and purify themselves with them. Purify thyself with them. Purify thyself with them. Usually, the vow of the Nazarene: you shave your hair, and then, then you don't you don't cut your hair again until the vow is over. Right? Read. And be at charges with them, that they may shave their heads. You see that? Read. And all may know that those things whereof they were informed concerning thee are nothing, but thou but that thou thyself also walkest orderly. And that's where you get the monks. You know how usually the monks, they're bullheaded, they got no hair and things of that nature. That's where they get that from because it comes from uh, that culture. But it, it's not that you keep your hair shaved all the time. You shave it and then you don't cut it until the vow is like a starting point. Boom, and then you don't say it. So if, if it's a vow for a year, you don't cut it for a year. If it's two years, five years, and things like that, you don't cut it. If it's a, you know, if your family presented you as a Nazarene from birth because the, 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 the parent has the authority to also give you, uh, to ordain you as a, as a Nazarene uh, as, a, as, a, as a child. So that went on too as well. Okay? Uh, let's read it. And that's why they rejected Christ because he, he came from the, na the town of Nazarene or Nazareth and they rejected him because he came eating and drinking what? Wine and meat. Because the Nazarene, you don't eat meat and you don't drink wine. Okay? The vow. Let's read but that thou thyself also walkest orderly and keepest the law. You see that? Read. As touching the Gentiles which believe. So it wasn't that Paul was teaching that, but because there was a misunderstanding of Paul's writings. So the disciples was telling Paul, this is what you need to do to correct that issue. Right? Read. As touching the Gentiles which believe, we have written and concluded that they are, Observe no such thing. Now, this is now going back into the Gentiles, that they don't have to keep the circumcision law necessarily, and things of that nature. But the Israelite had to keep that, 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 that concept. That's where you get the polling doctrine. And we're going to touch on that next week. I'm going to be doing a PowerPoint that most, you know, uh, since Christian ran, went, when um, flourished in Europe, the Europeans said, okay, Paul is for us. And Peter and James is for the Jews. So we don't have to keep certain things that in that nature. But we, we're going we're gonna to teach that that was not true. Let's read. As touching the Gentiles which believe, we have written and concluded that they observe no such thing, save only that they keep themselves from things offered to idols and from blood and from strangle and, f and from fornication. Remember when it talks about that there was a debate, a council of, in, in, in uh in uh, Jerusalem in Acts 15 and there was a sect of the Pharisee that said a, set, a man is not circumcised he cannot be saved and he was, talking, he was referring to the Gentiles and things of that nature now the, when you go into the writings it says that uh, they were trying to tell the, the Gentiles they, don't have, they have to be circumcised first that's not necessary for the Gentiles that's necessary for us you understand? Now, the Gentiles, they eventually can be circumcised to the project of time, but that cannot hinder the gospel. Neither dealing with Israelites, they are also not circumcised. So I can't say, I can't teach you until you're circumcised. So, so a lot of that was dealing with that. Uh, so let's keep reading. Verse 26. Then Paul took the men, and the next day purifying himself with them, entered into the temple to signify the accomplishment of the days of purification. So see, so he, he completed the day of, of purification. Read. Until that an offering should be offered for every one of them. Now, an offering that was still being done. So this was a culture that you have the believers of Christ were still dealing with these knuckleheads that were still sacrificing. 
they were still within that community because in Jerusalem, they did not care what sect you follow. As long as there is a sect that teaches you not, uh, you not um, to break away from the laws of Moses. So whether you are Zelags, a, a Pharisee, Pharisee, it doesn't matter. As long as you're not teaching, we have to do away with the law, right? So, but a lot of them did not believe in Christ. So they were still keeping the tradition of sacrifice and offering and things like that. Now, sometimes the offering is not necessarily a sacrifice. Sometimes it's a gift and things like that. Is. So Paul was being political. All the apostles was telling Paul, be political to keep this peace, to not shake the feathers here. You understand? Because we, we're working with these people, and we're trying to bring these people to Christ. You understand? That's what he was saying. Let's read it. Verse, verse 27. And when the seven days were almost ended, the Jews which were of Asia, when they saw him in the temple, stirred up all the people and laid hands on him. So the Jew, this was actually in Jerusalem, but these were Jews from Asia, and Asia Minor is where he, Paul was dealing with. So those Jews heard about Paul, and they got the, uh, the misunderstanding Paul was teaching the Jews not to keep the law, right? And this is what they said. Verse 28, crying out, men of Israel, help. This is the man that teacheth all men everywhere against the people and the law. So the plan that they were uh, uh, put together by the Israelites, uh, uh, the believe in Christ, they didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Listen, play along <laughs> because then there's rumors about you. But when they saw that, that's the guy. Let's read. In this place and further brought Greeks also into the temple and have polluted this holy place. Come on. For they had, had seen before with him in the city of Triopmus and Ephesian, whom they supposed that Paul had brought into the temple. See, they suppose. So it was a falsely doctrine. A falsely uh, belief. Read. And all the city was moved, and the people ran together. And they took Paul and drew him out of the temple, and forthwith the doors were shut. Okay, so, so uh, uh, and, and it keeps reading. Paul went through a lot. <laughs> Poor Paul. He was, you know, all over the place. You know, but, you know, he, he was prosecuting the Christians, so Christ don't listen. As much as <laughs> you, you, you bring pain, a lot of pain is going to come to you. All right, so let's go back to Rome's, Roman chapter 3, and we're going to end it there. We're going to conclude it next week. This is just a basically uh, uh, an in-depth study. Oh, not uh, Next week is going to be a more in-depth study of the history of that and also to show that this is out there. This is not something that is isolated. This was an argument that existed before all of us were born, de debating about the scripture. So it's, it's good for you guys to equip yourself with this knowledge, this history, for then when somebody comes from a, a particular angle, you know where the, the origin of that. Okay, so uh, let's keep reading. Uh, back in the book of Romans, chapter 3, and I'll start at verse 28. So you could clearly see with Paul's writing that people were so like, you read this? You see this? They could, be under, be, you know, they could very easily be understood, misunderstood, right? So let's keep reading. Verse 28. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? So remember, because he was, what was his argument? These Hellies, these Israelites that are living in an Israelite state of mind, they are also God's people, God's chosen people too. And you're not as much as, you're not more righteous than them. So we got to go to them. You understand? Let's read. Yes, of the Gentiles also. See, it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. Come on. Do we then make void the law do through we, faith? Do we make then the vo make, uh, void the law through faith? So he's asking a question. Read. God forbid. No. So now he's quantifying this. Now I could imagine if they were probably reading the letter and they probably just got all pissed off <laughs> and just read when he read verse 28. Read 28 again. Verse 28, therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Get the, uh, this guy out of here. I'm not, <laughs> can't read this anymore. <laughs> Just keep reading. That's, uh, I could imagine. Rip, uh, <laughs> you know how people are. 
burn that damn document. <laughs> Watch when I seen that guy. <laughs> they probably ripped apart when he said, <laughs> should we make more of the law? They probably never read that part. Because they were too angry. I can't read this. And you know Israel. You see what this guy's reading? <laughs> Stabbing it. <laughs> but we keep reading it. <laughs> but that's Israel, right? So Paul was, 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 was dealing philosophy because he was dealing with, he was trying to uh, appease to his people. So let's go and read uh, 31 again. Uh, and we're going to end it there. Verse 31. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. Give me the word yea there. If you can find it. The word yea. It should be the word in, in contrary. The opposite. Con. This is the word yea. It's G-235, and it's Allah. This is in the Greek now. It says Allah. G-235, probably other things. Other things. That is counterwise. Counterwise. In many relations. Uh-huh. And, but, even, how be it, indeed, nay, nevertheless, no, notwithstanding, Save, therefore, yea, yet. Right, and we, I think in my version it says uh, contrary, contrary to. So what he was trying to say is, is that, no, we do the opposite. When we, should we make void the, through faith? Because the argument is the, the first principle is the faith in Christ. And then once you do that, then you could teach the law. So the first thing you have to teach them is the gospel. So from a, from a Pharisee perspective, from their tradition of man, they, were not, they could not teach the gospel because these people were, and, and you know, something you sent me or something, these were, these were probably believers in Christ of the Pharisee sect. And they were, trying, they were still believing that Christ was the Messiah, but they were still stuck in these traditions. That's why it was when you go to Acts, it just hit me, go to Acts 15. Because who are the people that are always harping on the law? Or more the traditions of man? Acts 15 and 1. The book of Acts, chapter 15, verse 1. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised, after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and uh, disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other, other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, Declaring the conversation of the Gentiles. Jump down to five. That's the one I'm looking for. Verse five. But there rose up certain of the set of the Pharisees which believed. They what? Which believed. So there were Pharisaic people or people that came from the Pharisaic sect as uh, Paul that was believing in Christ. They were in the body of Christ, believed in Christ. Read. Saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Now, the word the, the law, remember, uh, is talking about what? The, because the word the, when you go into the Greek, it means that, this, that one. So he was referring to the Gentiles, and he was, it, so put the word that, uh, that law. And to command them to keep that law of Moses. Talking about the circumcision. Okay. In, in, in that nature. So, because it, it, it was hindering the gospel. The tradition of the Pharisees were hindering the gospel. I can't come to your house, but you got to come to my house. You got to take these, wear these clothes. You, you understand? You got to wash your furs. You got to do this. If you're not circumcised, I can't see you. So it, it was hindering the gospels. So that's what. That's why uh, these traditions had to be put aside to teach the gospel. And that's the first thing. And what is the gospel? Okay, believe in Christ that He forgives you for your sins. That's the gospel. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You know, he, 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 you're, you're delivered from all your debt. Clean slate. That's the gospel. 
And then once they believe that, then you could go into the, the teaching of the law. That's what Paul was saying, right? So uh, the word there, yet, it means in, in opposite. Yet, we, we, in, in the contrary, we, uh, we, we establish the law. So put the word in, con in, the, in, the, in, the, in the in contrary or, or the opposite or the, the another word to, to, to edify. Romans 3 and 31. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Contrary, we establish the law. Right. In the contrary, we establish the law. So he was, he was edifying the same thing. Okay, so we're going to end it there now because we, 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 we got the announcement. We got some other things we're going to uh, be doing. And Deacon, I, uh, I want you to stop. He's getting ready. I know people, wanna, by the time we get there and things that nature, it's going to take some time. So next week, uh, we're going to be airing live. I want to do a PowerPoint. I'm going to the history of when the doctrine of the sons of Seth versus the sons of, uh, uh, of God was changed, that doctrine is very important because it, it goes for a long time. And also the Pauline doctrine and what is the philosophy behind that and things of that nature. There's either, like, and I went to a website last night, which is called uh, Jesus Words Only. And it's a Christian organization that is petitioning for people to reject Paul's writings. Wow. So it's, 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 it's out there. It's out there. And I, listen, I get them. Got to remember, there's two things. These people are not Israelites. So they're not going to understand the scripture the way you do. So you take for granted that. You, you think that, you, you think just because these people may have PhD and theology and all that, they, 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 you know, the scripture says the book is going to be like a book that is hidden, it's closed, it's sealed. So it's going to be us that we're going to be like, no, 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 no. Listen, sit down. Let me teach you. <laughs> the world, the Gentiles. So a lot of even the Gentiles are walking, on, are walking away from Paul's writings because now they understand, okay, we got to keep the commandments because there's a lot of church, what you call Messianic churches out there that is being established. And a lot of the people that are pushing that is the Jews because now, the so-called Jews, because now they, they, they're trying to, you know, help uh, Jews for Jesus. Uh, all that is, is, is the so-called Jews leading that because... Uh, in their mind, if you can't beat them, you join them. So now it's like, you know, help Israel and donate to Israel, you know, and things of that nature. So, uh, uh, it, it's, so we have to be ready and equipped when we're when, when we out the, the entire world debating with these people. We have to be sharp. Study to show us of a proof. Yeah, brother. Yeah, what was that document that you have? Uh, the, which document? Oh, oh, it, it's in my Bible. It has a, a small psychopedia. And it goes into, uh, but you can find this in the in the sect of Pharisees, in the in in the Zion Sand about Bible Dictionary. You could get, you know, it gives you that history on their sect. Um, okay, but but study these other sects because then you could understand, you know, the the uh, it, it, it helps you uh, bring better light to the argument of of um, the, the apostles. Yeah, brother in the back. This is my King James. Nelson House, Nelson Bible. Uh, you know, I've been having this thing, as you can see, it's all ripped up. Battle Ward with this. <laughs> Nelson, okay, and it has like a, it has a, uh, a commentary between, uh, or a small psychopathy between the Old and the New Testament, okay? And also, uh, Elder De Josephus yes. goes in depth into it as, as well. Right. Like Pharisees, Sadducees, what they believe, like we did uh, uh, the reincarnation deception. Right. right. And how they, what they believe in reincarnation, you yeah. know, and so it, it goes a lot into it if you get to Josephus, like on the different sects and what they believe in. Right, you know. right. Also, uh, follow, uh, follow of Egypt, another, uh, another Jew that was in that contemporary with, yeah, with uh, yeah. Josephus. Mm -hmm. he, he spoke a lot of that. But he's, he's, he was a big philosopher as well. Yep, yep. You know, things of that nature. Okay. All right, any other question? Okay. All right, so uh, I know that we have guests here. Th yes, sister? You, yeah. Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. 3 and 16. Romans 3, 16. Let's go there. Chapter 1, verse 16. The first chapter. Okay. Romans 1, 16. Romans 1, 16. Let's go there. Okay, read that, uh, Elder. The book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Shia, 
For it is the power of the Most High unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Right, the Greek there is referring to the, the Heli, which is the Israelite that was scattered, the ten tribes. Verse 9, let's read verse 9. Romans chapter 2, verse 9. Tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. This is actually, the word there is, a, uh, re, let's get the word, uh, the word Gentile there. I think that one is Greek. I think that one is Greek. So this is the rule of thumb that how I resolve it. There's two Words utilized in the in the New Testament that sometimes it's talking about is the word heli, which is Greek, and then the other word is ethnos, which is people. Every single time it's talking about Greek, it's talking about us. Every single time. So, but the word Gentiles. Okay. Okay. Maybe when all, all, all three of them are on, maybe that's what it is. Okay. But when the word ethnos, people. It all depends on the context of the conversation. So you got to kind of, uh, it all depends. Because sometimes it's talking about everybody, and sometimes it's talking about uh, us. Okay, but in here, it, what, what is it, matter of fact? Is it uh, ethnos or, or heli? It's heli. So it's heli is referring to, right, us. So he was, at this point, he was saying to the Jews uh, that were in Judea, and also the Israelites that were scattered. The ten, the northern, yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, that's why it says there was a, like in uh, Acts 6. Let's go there real quick. Many of them, you know, they know this. Who has a Bible dictionary? Zandabal. Zandabal Bible dictionary. Bring it up here. Okay, get the word heli. Get the word Greek. And we... we it's a very complicated situation because they deliberately hide this thing. They deliberately hide, like, um, okay, thank water, brother. Okay, that, that, that's actually the word, go ahead here. Okay, heli. Hellenist, okay. And then hold that. Okay, just give it to the delta there, the water, brother. And then uh, let's get the word heli. Okay, yep. Yeah, put it like put it under you, like. Uh, I have to turn it on. Yeah. The water. The water. Uh, a light. Somebody turn it on. Messing with the light. Some of the kids. Okay. Okay. Here we go. So this is out the uh, Zondervan Bible Dictionary. The word Hellenist. Jews who made Greek their tongue. And with it, often adopted Greek ideas and practices. Okay, so the word Hellenist was Jews that make their Greek their tongue. Now, give me the word Greek. And when you go in the word Greek, it says Greek, uh, or Grecia, the home of the Hellenist. Yep. So yep. if the, if, <laughs> right? Yep. Let's, let's read that. So this is the uh, word Greece or uh, Greece. Grisha is Greece. Oh, excuse me, uh, brother. Uh, sister, did you need help, uh, Daniel? Oh, no. After that. Okay. You good? Okay. Okay. Uh, who's going to do the, the announcement? You are or? The, okay, perfect. Okay. Okay. So you're going to head out now? Okay. Okay. The water sister. Okay. So read that again. Read that, uh, the Greek part. All right. This is the definition uh, for Greece or Grisha. Grisha is Greece, the home of the Hellenes. So wait a minute. So if the Hellenes were Greek-speaking Jews, right? So the word, because it, it was synonymous, they began to be called after the land of the Greeks. So the Greeks were Hellenes. The Hellenes were Greek-speaking Jews. So when Paul was saying there is no difference between a Jew and a Greek, because they were still Israelites. You understand that saying that? Uh, no, okay. it's actually a little bit more. Okay. I was going to say just like Americans. Right. It's like Americans, <laughs> you know right. I mean? <laughs> there is no difference between a Puerto Rican and a Dominican. Right. <laughs> or a Jamaican and a black. <laughs> right. Same thing. It Let's says, uh, Greeks and Grecians, however, are to be distinguished. 
Greeks are generally those of the Hellenic, Hellenic race and probably, excuse me, but the word may be used to indicate non-Jews. So it's like either or, either foreigners or. or aliens. Yeah, exactly, right. exactly. But the majority of the time, but because I used to always wonder when I was a little kid, I'm like, Mom, why in the Bible says Greek and the Jews? God, what about Dominicans? What is <laughs> like? Why keep why the Mosai? You know, in the, in the New Testament, you hear Greek a lot. There's no in between a Jew and a Greek, a Greek and a Greek, because now we know the answer. Because and the answer that my mom used to give me was like, well, the Greek represents humanity, you know, something like that. Everybody, it was a, a term for everybody, you know, whatever. But really, it was talking about actually Israelites that were scattered, the other lone tribes. Okay, all right. So, um, real quick, those that are here for the first time, raise your hand. First time. Okay, there's a lot. Give a man for that. Okay, what we're going to do is, you're going to go real quick, introduce yourself. Uh, who are you and why are you here? And then and, and just say shalom. So I guess we could start with this brother over here in the corner. And uh, we're going to pass you a mic. Shalom, shalom. Shalom. Um, I'm Brother DeLorean. I'm, uh, I came here uh, from Detroit. Um, yeah, this, this is my first time here in New York City, period. Uh, I've been uh, studying for about seven months now. Okay. Uh, got baptized in Chicago. Okay. Uh, with, with Bishop Lamont. Uh, and been strong in it. I mean, I'm still a newbie, but, you okay. know, I'm here, though. Hey Amen. So. Give the most high hand. I, I, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have somebody. Yep, yeah, thank you, sis. Uh, shalom, family. Shalom, uh, brother Gadala. Uh, two two seconds, brother. Can we have two brothers uh, put the podium down? If you don't mind, thank you. Go ahead, brother. Uh, brother Gadala, I came from Chicago. It's my first time being here. I've been in the truth for about say like a year and a couple months. Uh, it's still new to me. I'm still a newbie as well, but uh, staying strong or trying to as much as I can. I'm here, so uh, I'm thankful for that and. Thankful to be in here with the the body is is huge, so that's that's always good when I see that. So, Amen, Amen. Give the most high hand. Shalom, family. Shalom. I'm Brother Anthony from Chicago. I've been in the truth for a while now, about a year and a half. Uh, I didn't know this many of y'all was here. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> uh, I'm glad to be here. This is my first time in New York as well, and uh, it's great to be here with y'all. And uh, be with the family. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> hey, we got one brother over here. Uh, these brothers look new. Family. You guys are new too, right? You, we skipped these brothers. Make sure you're okay. All right. <laughs> 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 we got these brothers. These, 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 I know this brother. You've been here before. First time, right? No? Okay. First time? Okay, okay. Make sure you grab that brother too. Okay, go ahead, brother. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Uh, brother Ezra from Memphis. Uh, just up here visiting the family. I appreciate it. Uh, grace, mercy, and peace to all of you all. It's a blessing to see beautiful faces and repentant hearts. That's a blessing. So, you know, having the fellowship and prayers and, and whatnot just to be embellished in the spirit. I thank you all. All praise to the most high. Amen. The water. Okay, right here with uh, Brother Emmanuel. Shalom, family. Shalom. Uh, Brother Emmanuel from Chicago. Um, I was uh, introduced to the truth by my cousin here, um, Zion Nawa. And he introduced me to Bishop Lamont, and ever since then, you know, I joined the church. I've been part of the church. And then, um, yeah, it's, it's a great experience being here in New York, and I appreciate you guys for inviting us out here. Amen. Shalom, uh, shalom everybody. Uh, I've been in the truth for, like, uh, since July. I don't know how many months that is, but uh, I came in with uh, GOC to Chicago. They... Uh, they showed me, showed me the ropes of how to do everything. Um, but I appreciate the welcome and everything. Uh, bless. I mean, I'm, oh, my name is Greg. I'm sorry. I'm, okay. sorry. <laughs> I'm, from, uh, I'm from East St. Louis, Illinois. So I go to uh, e Eastern Illinois University. So, uh, I mean, I'm with GLCC Chicago. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. Pass it down. These two brothers. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I know there was more. I saw more hands right here in the back. Show more hands. Shalom, family. Shalom, brother Tony. <laughs> Probably visit a car uh, from San Antonio, Texas. Okay. And, uh, yeah, thank you. Um, let's see. Well, we're here. I'm here 
basically to unite, be with the body, first of all, and of course, simply for edification and for unity. That's basically what I'm here for as well. Been in the, year, uh, in the truth for about two and a half years, two and a half years now, and you know, as part of being part of the fold, we're here to unite. So that's what we're here for. You know, one Amen. Stick. One Amen. Stick. Amen. Okay. Shalom, everybody. Shalom. Uh, I was into the. I was introduced to the truth by my brother and uh, just started actually, so it's kind of interesting to know new things about what's really going on. And uh, yeah, I'm grateful to be here. Okay, amen. <laughs> Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Uh, she's on a lot of new phases. Don't be shy. Okay. Shabbat shalom. <laughs> Shabbat shalom. Um, I'm Chris. I'm from Chicago. Um, the Most High has brought me here to New York to be able to experience. This, this 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 movement and to to confirm that he is working through the body through all of us for that and I'm thankful for that amen amen okay pass it down we got a brother over there in the black don't be shy who are you and why are you here hello my name is Dwayne uh brother Mac had well shalom everybody shalom my brother Mac had brought me today and just grateful to be alive and seeing everybody being peaceful and happy with their lives. So. Amen. Just Amen. Oh, Dwayne. <laughs> Shalom. Shalom. Everybody. Um, I was introduced to this church by my sister right here. What sister is that? Oh, okay. Amen. <laughs> All right. So it's my first time, and it's very interesting to be at your church today, and I thank God for it. I thank God for each and everybody who's attending at this church at this present moment. Okay, so it's, I'm kind of really shy still, but. <laughs> Amen. All praises. The most right. side working. The most side working. So, um, you guys will be seeing my face next time. Amen. 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 <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. I see in the back. Shalom. Shalom. Um, my name is Richard. Um, I've been watching some of the stuff online for a while, but I never physically made an appearance. So I just wanted to see what it was all about. You know, I had my son with me, so I wanted to come ch and check it out. And uh, I just wanted to fellowship more than just studying on my own, you know? Okay, amen. So, yeah. Amen. <laughs> all right. Any sisters? I know we got some sisters. Any? Are we done with the brothers? Okay, we got the sisters. We could, I guess we, we can start from the back going forward. <laughs> Shalom, family. Sh Shalom. Oh, very shy. Um, well, I'm from the tribe of Issachar. My name is Adriana. I stay in um, Alabama. Just moved like two months ago um, from Mexico. So, and, you know, I just wanted to gather. So, yeah, came here from Alabama. Amen, amen. <laughs> you know, soon we're going to have GOCC Mexico, GOCC Puerto Rico, GOCC Dominican Republico. We're going to make it happen. I know we got more sisters. Raise your hand, sisters. I know I saw more hands earlier. I think in the front. Andrea in the front right here. Right here. Two sisters in the front. Okay. Don't be shy. Shalom, everybody. Shalom. My name is Valerie. Um, it's my first time in New York. Um, I came here with GLCC Chicago. Just recently got baptized. Uh, I've been in the truth for a couple of months now. Amen. Welcome. Right here. Say hello. Shalom, everybody. Shalom. My name is Mashanika Yupa, and um, I'm with GLCC Chicago. Uh, I've been in the truth since June of this year, and um, I just got baptized. Well, I got baptized in September with um, GLCC as well. Okay, amen. Shalom, everybody. Shalom. My name is Alante. I'm here with the GOCC Chicago, and I also go to Eastern Illinois University in Charleston, and I've been in the truth for about going on four months now. I've been uh, baptized for a month now, thanks to Elder Lamont. Amen. Elder Lamont to be here works. And unified with you all. Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay. I think that one more. We got one more here. You got the shy one. See? It's always the quiet one you got to watch out for. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Shabbat shalom. My name, I'm sorry. <laughs> my name is Sister Israel. I'm here with my husband Ezra. We're from Memphis. 
and it's just a blessing to be among like-minded brothers and sisters, and I'm really enjoying the fellowship with you all. Amen, amen. Okay. Oh, we got one more. We got sneaked away. I just wanted to know if I can give my testimony regarding I went, I just came back after being away. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Um, good evening, um, brothers and sisters. I, I went away to Ethiopia for two weeks, and I just wanted to share my testimony. I was baptized at GOCC in Virginia, October 31st, 2013. All praises to the Most High. And um, I got into the um, truth because of my son who um, fl fled to Ethiopia about three years. It'll be January. And he had trials and tribulations there. However, um, he, he has been blessed. And um, just prior to me leaving, um, going to um, Ethiopia, you know, I refused to do the vaccination, all praises to the Most High. And um, I was approved by CDC that I didn't have to take vaccination. And um, I went there and um, just not maybe eight hours prior to returning back to America, I was offered a job there. And um, with a business visa, um, I have to pray over it and, he and listen to the word of a walk and see what Elder Gabar thinks of it. But I just returned um, Thursday, the 26th of November. Um, well, amen. And I, so I and I'll be communicating with your son, so we, we'll, we'll talk. Yeah, so we'll I just wanted to share that. Well, amen. Give the most high hand for that. Well, yeah, I think I said this, um, and you could adjust the... Uh, the camera. I think I said this, I think, in the radio show one, w last week. You know, this Passover, we're going to be having it in, and uh, we're going to be announcing the Passover, what we're going to be having this year is going to be in the Virginia area, Maryland area, uh, D.C. area. It's like uh, where all those three states hit. And um, <clears throat> we're expecting my personal situation. This is me, okay? If this is the most I will, that this is probably going to be my last Passover in the States. Uh, you know, so in 2017 is... Uh, we would like, I would like to be out of here if the Most High uh, makes a will, and then, uh, and if <laughs> and if Elder Ricard releases me in my duty, <laughs> the car keys, okay. Uh, uh, so you know, I've been uh, I asked Elder Ricard I think three years ago to be released to me. I was like, I got ready to go, Elder. Like, no, 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 I still need you there, good boy. So um, you know, so it's, it's, so this Passover, you know, we're gonna try to make it the biggest one ever. I know uh, Chicago, you guys coming too, right? Uh, we talk? Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. But, you know, I think, it, you know, we're all said and done. Where people will be like, uh, last minute, I don't know, but uh, we're going to be promoting it as well. It's, uh, 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 we're going to be doing commercials, showing different ex uh, camps that are going to be there. Also, um, we want to take a picture. Well, we, we could do it to later on, uh, or maybe next week, if we do it uh, with, with the congregation, because we're going to be doing a montage of all the different churches that are going to be coming and things of that nature. So so just to promote the event and things of that nature. Because, you know, we got into next year, but it's, you start promoting it now, and people start getting excited about it, and then, you know, start saving their, you know, uh, uh, their money and in, in, in coming. So uh, it's time for us to st take it to the next level because, you know, next time it's time, you know, we have to start looking into, you know, uh, organized and, and uh, 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 in a formal way to start looking for outside this country. And we've been doing that, but we have to start wrapping it up, you know, in the future.